and throw the trash away and then do like that. So whatever. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Wood Doofus here. You know, I was sitting on the couch today. I was getting ready to make some cabinets to go on either side of this radial arm saw and I was really excited about it. I was gonna get something done. It's been a long time and then I get a text from my wife and in this text, there's a link to an Amazon item which is a trash can bin cabinet. You've probably seen a lot of things like this and a lot of people like to make these things. And she says to me, I bet you can make something like this. And I say, girl, you know I can make something like that and I can do it for a lot less than $540. So long story short, I guess my shop furniture is going to have to wait just a little bit longer. I went to the Home Depot and just bought a lot of stuff randomly. I bought one sheet of this plywood. I got some uh, wings cutting things here. I got uh, some hardware. This is about $15. And I got some 2x4s. I'm not going to use all those 2x4s. So I calculated out, and out of the materials that I bought, I spent maybe $100, and there's going to be a lot of leftover material. So I'd say this whole project is going to cost me about 80 bucks. Width of the sidewall looks like 16 inches should be adequate. So we will go with that. I think my wife wants me to put a drawer above the trash cans that fold out. So that's going to be an upgrade with a six inch drawer. And we'll say 32 inches will be the height. mark here and let's see how long that is that is marked at just shy of 40 inches so we are going to call 40 inches the width and that means i'm going to cut some stringers to accommodate 40 inches So I have several pieces here and I wanted to make sure I didn't mix them up. So I went ahead and labeled which section they are going to connect on. If that makes any sense. Anyway, these are all stringers. The back stringers are an inch and a half shorter because they're going to fit inside. And the front stringers are going to fit across the end grain. So they're going to be longer. You'll see when I put it together. Don't ask me questions. I don't care. So the spacing was not working out for a second stringer that goes under the door. So I've decided to take another panel and insert it down in here between the two trash hands. And that's going to, I kind of need that anyway to accept the drawer slides. And it's going to add some more stability to the entire structure. But it's going to have to be notched around these two back stringers. So I'm gonna have to cut out a notch in the bottom corner and the top corner to work around there and then just attach it. 
All right, so I was a little sloppy, but I just cut these notches out on the table saw. And uh, it's going to leave some stuff, but uh, it's all on the inside, so I didn't worry about it too much. I'm just going to finish it off with uh, this little whatever saw. Nice and snug. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and measure the center so we can go ahead and tack that thing in with glue and nails. Once again, we're 40 inches. So the center point should be 20 inches. So I measured the openings here and strangely enough, they're exactly the same. That rarely happens. They're at, they are at 18 and 7 eighths on both sides. So I cut these landing pads here at 17 and 7 eighths. So there's a half inch gap on both sides. So the idea is that this trash can will sit on the landing and then there'll be a quarter circle pivot system that pulls forward and has a stop and that quarter circle is also going to be attached to the door so in my mind if i'm thinking right it's not going to need any kind of attached pivot point because the door will act as the attached part all it needs is a stop so it doesn't just fall all the way forward and throw the trash away and then do like that, so whatever. So I came up with a crazy idea to uh, make sure that I get the right kind of angle. This thing here is gonna make a different angle than I think it's gonna be. So what I did was I screwed a screw through this hole where I think the uh, the pivot point should start. Once I screwed it through there, it made a mark in the wall here. And so I was able to take that mark and screw a screw back through. And now I have a screw just barely sticking through. And why it's sticking through is because it's going to scratch the board on the side to show me the true pivot once I attach a fake piece here that's going to act as the door and add the hinge here and all that stuff. So let me get that together and we'll try it out. All right, undid the hinge and this is what we got. Mm, looks nothing like the other side at all. So, all right, so here's what I'm thinking. I got the trash can in here and I want to mark somehow point on this board where the trash can is as far forward as I want it because that would essentially be the stopping point. So I think all I'm going to do is just screw the screw right in there like that and hopefully that will leave enough of a mark. Alright so this is what I got. I think all of what I need to get the trash can visible is cut a routed hole from here to the screw. It's a new day and uh, I've been thinking about this in my sleep and I realized there might be easier ways to do this mechanism where there's a stop of some kind rather than cutting a groove in but I'm already this far and this is all the groove I gotta cut so I'm gonna go ahead and try it. If it doesn't work I have a backup plan.
we're getting a little bit of a thunderstorm here and I have my first door which looks okay and it is okay but uh, I ran into some problems and I'll walk you through the second door so I cut the grooves all the way across the uh, styles yeah this is the style because it goes up and down so I cut the grooves all the way across the style which means I had planned for pocket holes to connect here but I don't know how pocket holes would connect if there's no material there at the end to connect to so I had to cut some little pieces of wood and glue them in there and hopefully after that dries there'll be enough of a connection there so I did that and uh, besides that that's about it it, uh, it looks okay I just lost my clamp to do is clamp down my edge guide for one of my circular saws and just give like a little bit of a reveal on the edge guide so when I so when I put the circular saw across here it's going to take off and smooth over all these imperfections and make it look real good So it almost has the illusion now of having a tongue and groove system, which it doesn't. I just put a little filler piece in there, but you can pretend. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, when you're gluing the whole thing, make sure this panel is floating, which means that it's not glued in on any of these edges. The only glue goes on these four seams right here, and this needs to float so when, it, when the wood moves, with the temperature and humidity and whatever, it can uh, float around inside there. Now that I have these doors mocked up, ready to be painted now basically, anyway, I need to be able to attach this system down here to the door and I think I'm going to do that with pocket holes here and pocket screw it into there so first thing I want to do before I mark where they're going to attach to each other is I want to get this off of the ground basically so I'm going to put these little skinny shims under here that way it's not going to be attached as if it's sitting directly on the ground I'm going to give it a little bit of space off the ground I'm going to go ahead and get these hinges situated too before I connect the two pieces together. So I'm just going to attach these like this. Alright, so this is a dry assembly. Woo. I already got the hinges on the other side of the door, so it's hinged up. Alright, so the mechanism works. But I don't think it has the range of motion that I need. I think I can adjust it and see what we can do. Just need to extend that, that stopping point. Right, so drill another hole here and then extend this 
a little bit further. So wood duper strikes again. So what we have here is a good functional mechanism. The trash can comes out plenty to uh, accommodate pulling it out and whatever you need to do. And it pulls itself back nicely because of uh, physics. Problem is I wanted to put a drawer here, but the clearance goes to here. So if I had a drawer where I thought it, there was gonna be a drawer, the clearance is wrong. So if you ever do this in the future, make sure your door comes all the way to the maximum clearance needed. Somehow you gotta figure that measurement out. My maximum clearance is about right there. So if I had a drawer, it would have to be right at the top edge here. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to bang this off of here with a hammer if I can and put the max clearance point with this material across here and then maybe put a drawer right on top. We got the clearance we need now, and now we have a little bit of space to put a drawer here. So I'm going to fashion a false extension here and probably pocket hole it, pocket screw it to this, and then I'll just have to come with a false extension to the cabinet door, and that is the best quick fix I could think of. All right, so I might be calling it a night, but I think I got the general look. I didn't think to get more hardware since I'm putting doors on. That was an afterthought. We'll have to make another trip to the store later on. But uh, this comes down like that and clears nicely. And that will be a drawer front eventually when I, after I make drawers. So I think it looks pretty good. All right, so thanks for watching the video so far. I think we're gonna wrap it up here because I don't really like making videos longer than 20 minutes. But if you wanna see the rest of it, make sure you stay tuned. As of making this video, I think I have 529 subscribers, which is amazing and I appreciate all of that. And if you wanna be an honorary doofus also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate any support for this channel. I have a good time making it. And as always, don't be afraid to be a doofus.